Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? A uh, little pause there for the thumbnail. <laughs> I always go all the way through my vlog. You hear all these sirens. Today has been <clears throat> the craziest day outside. There's been sirens. There was a, we a weather warning because of the winds. The winds were so high that I actually had to film most of my videos inside. It's kind of died down a little bit, so I was like, I think I'm gonna film outside for my vlog. People don't really care. Somebody said in my video yesterday, I was talking about lighting the candles, and they said, no, it kind of adds the ambiance. So let me light this candle. I think this lighter is about out. I have to get some more tomorrow. I don't know if you can hear it, but... It's supposed to sound kind of like a fire. So, yeah, I'll just, now there it goes, do you hear it? It's really pretty, isn't it? So anyway, it's been crazy today. There's been like a lot of sirens and the wind has been grow, uh, blowing like crazy. And I got up late, because I stayed up late last night. And um, I felt really, I always feel like I have a hard time getting this camera settled. And I, um, came outside and it was so windy. I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to film all my videos inside today. And it's actually really nice. It's like, it was like 70, 71 today in Indianapolis, which is crazy. And then like the rest of the week is supposed to be in the fifties. So, but today it was like really, it was, it was cloudy and it was like overcast, but it was really warm. It was really nice. You can see I have a t-shirt on and I've got my sweat short shorts on and stuff like that. So it was, um, a really nice day today. So, as far as like temperature wise. And um, so I got up and I was like, I'm gonna have to film all my videos inside. And I was like, I don't really feel feel like pulling out the ring light. So I did some in the bedroom, some in from my computer, some sitting in a chair with no ring light. And I was just like, you know what? This is, this is what it is today. So anyway, um, but I didn't really think that I was gonna film that many videos. I was gonna film, this Peter Does Stuff video that I did, um, was just kind of like totally spur of the moment. Um, I talked about it in that video, but if you follow Adam McIntyre, um, his cat passed away this morning. And so I felt so bad for him. And um, I just wanted to kind of talk about the importance of grieving pets. So I did a video about that. And I really wasn't gonna do any reviews and stuff today. I was just, it was kind of getting late in the day, right? And Alex usually gets off at five, but he got off at 5.30 and then he got home. It's like, right now it's like 6.15. And so, well, I think it's actually closer to 6.30. And so I was like, I don't really have that much time to film videos and whatever. And so I was like, I guess I'm just gonna film like a video or two. I ended up filming videos. This is the sixth video out of seven channels that I filmed on today. And they weren't like super short videos. They weren't like all like eight minutes long or anything like that. I was kind of surprised. Well, I filmed a video last night about Jacqueline Hill's video um, of her quitting drinking. And um, so I had that video to post today. So th I, I didn't have to like film a, you know, a video for my drama channel today and things like that. So anyway, it's been a really good day. I have felt like rested. I felt very relaxed today. Um, I've just been like in a really good mood all day today. Talked to all my neighbors and stuff like that. I've been, this is my second cup of coffee that I'm having for the day. and. Yeah, it's just been like a really nice day, and I found out earlier through a friend of mine, I thought Dragula on Shudder, the only reason that I have Shudder is because it has Dragula on there. It has a lot of other horror movies and stuff, but like there's also those movies you can find other places that I have. So there's really no reason for me to have Shudder other than, and I think even, I think some combo that I have of like some channels, like Shutter is included in that, so there's really no reason for me to pay for Shutter, but I haven't even looked into that. It's not it's not that expensive. <clears throat> but um the the only reason I got Shutter back in the day was to watch Dragula. I love Dragula. I love it. Um if you've watched RuPaul's Drag Race in the past and you like it, Dragula is like a spookier version of that. But like the uh uh, the special effects kind of stuff, the makeup is unbelievable. It is fantastic. Like, I mean, it's a completely different kind of drag, but it is like true artistry. Like, it is unbelievable. And so, I found I thought it was starting like in a week or two because I thought I saw a tweet by the Boulay brothers, who are the ones that put on Dragula. 
And I guess it started last week on Halloween. I didn't know that. And so I guess tonight or tomorrow night is the second episode. So maybe tonight at midnight. I don't know. So I am so excited. I'm like, okay, I'm watching Dragula. I'm getting into that. And I will probably report on it on my Peter Does Stuff channel because it's a reality show. So why not, right? Um, so yeah, this candle smells so good. I didn't, like, this was not my favorite of oh, all these Woodwick candles. I have, like, four of them in there, four or five of them in there. And this was not my favorite. This is Humidor when I got it. But when you burn it, it smells so good. It kind of, like, it kind of smells like a sweet, like, cedar wood or something. Which I guess would be a, a Humidor, right? Where you keep, like, cigars and stuff like that. So, yeah. So, that was my day. So, uh, last night... Alex and I watched some TV, and then he went to bed about 11.30, and I was actually going to lay down for a little bit, but I was like, no, just stay up. And so that was when, I, I watched something last night. Oh, I think I watched Big Brother, because I hadn't watched the, uh, the live eviction first. And so I watched Big Brother, no, 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 that's not true. What did I watch last night first? Oh, I watched Jacqueline Hill's video. I watched Jacqueline Hill's video and I cleaned up the kitchen a little bit and stuff like that. And then when I got done with that, I had taken some notes. So it's kind of like a slow watch of that video. Then I filmed my video and I uh, filmed that video and then I rendered it and uploaded it. And when I was done with that, I was watching something else while that was getting done. But when I got done with that, I then watched the video back, got it all ready to like publish and post and stuff like that today. I had it scheduled for like 3.30, but I ended up posting it at 2.30 instead. So I did that video and got that all ready. And then I watched Big Brother. And by that point, it was like starting to get kind of late. I, I literally, I have so many shows to catch up on. I have Welcome to Plathville from last week. I, so I, every week I, you know, go in and I like X out all my shows. And then like I have a new week to start. But if I don't watch a show that week, I put like the date that it was on. And then underneath it, I put like, you know. So for example, like The Golden Bachelor. Um, what is today? Well, I don't even know what date. So the Golden Bachelor would have been on the second. So I did watch the Golden Bachelor. But what I would do is I would put like Golden Bachelor uh, colon, and then I would put uh, or semicolon, and then I would put Thursday because it's on Thursday, like th. And then underneath it, I put the Golden Bachelor. I know people are like, this is so stupid. Why are you even talking about it? Because it's my process. So then underneath it, I would put like the Golden Bachelor like eleven two because I hadn't watched that. Where I put it at first because I hadn't watched that one. And then so I make like this list of all the shows I haven't watched yet and caught up on, and all the shows I did watch. So I had to like revamp my list last night because there were a lot of shows I hadn't watched. Like I hadn't watched Welcome to Plathville yet. I have. I still haven't finished. I just, I've done that a couple times today where I've been like smacking my lips. Um, I, I, so I haven't watched Welcome to Plathville, and it comes on tomorrow night. Um, the only show I think that comes on tonight that is, that I watch is Below Deck Mediterranean. I'm already caught up on that. So, uh, Welcome to Plathville, I have to catch up on. I have to finish watching, I have like 45 minutes left of Love After Lockup. And then I have two episodes of 90 Day Fiance. Alex and I, I thought I had two episodes of the Kardashians, but it's one, so we, I still have that to watch. Um, Love Island Games, or Love Games, or whatever it's called. I just looked at this list. I looked at this list so many times today, actually. I just looked at it, so I should know all of these. It's some other show that we haven't watched yet. Oh, Real Housewives of Potom Potomac, the first episode came out. I have never watched it before, so I'm going to go into it and not know anything about it. My friend Nikki was like, because um, she sent out, like, Mel was like, can you give me kind of, like, a recap of what's happened, like, in the last eight seasons? And so, like, uh, Nikki gave her, like, a recap. She's like, do you want me to give you a recap, too? I was like, no, girl, I'm fine. I'm just going to go into it, and then I'll go back and I'll watch all the seasons. So I'm going to go into that season not knowing, or the this season not knowing anything about the history of Potomac. I, I know a little bit because, like, Candace and I can't remember the other one's name, the other woman's name. We're both on the Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip, Thailand. So I kind of know about like their disagreements and all that kind of stuff. But I've never watched it before. So I am excited about watching Potomac because people have told me that they love Potomac. So here's my plan. Like any new housewife that comes out, which I think this is this one in New Jersey are the only two that I, I like I don't know. I haven't watched it at all ever. Um, <clears throat> so like with this starting, when I get done with Miami, I still have half of uh season four of Miami and all of season five to catch up and then I'm done with Miami I'm, I've watched everything um there's a few seasons from the very beginning of Beverly Hills I've like I've 
would watch it from the very beginning, but like off and on. So I'm gonna go back and start watching that again. I've never watched New Jersey, so I need to go and watch all of New Jersey. Orange County, I watched like at the very beginning, like a season, then stopped, then a season or two or three, and then stopped. So there's a couple seasons that I have to go back, so I may go back and watch Orange County all the way from the beginning. So, and then I have New Jersey and, um, New Jersey and what do you call it, uh, Potomac to watch. New Jersey has like 14 or 16 seasons, so it's going to be a lot. But my plan is to watch the season that's coming out and then go back and watch like all of the seasons. And so by this time next year, I'll have watched every episode of every season that's out. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go back and watch the old seasons of New York. Most of them I've seen. Um, and to be honest with you, I don't, I didn't love the old cast that much. Um, and they were really problematic. I'm not like a Ramona fan at all. She was like, this whole situation recently was really bad. And then, um, she kind of like, her look and stuff kind of reminds me of my mom a little bit and her being unaware. But she's like, kind of can be a really nasty person. Sonia Morgan, I'm not like a big fan of. Luann, I like. I actually really like Luann on the Ultimate Girls Trip. Um, Sonia Morgan is just a bragger to me. I loved Carol. Nobody really liked Carol. My friend Tanya couldn't stand her. I liked Carol. Who else was on the show? Ugh. Tinsley Mortimer, boring, boring turn. I couldn't stand her. It wasn't that I couldn't stand her. I just didn't think she made for good TV. Um, who else has been on it way back? I mean, there's been so many on New York. Dorinda, Dorinda Medley, I like a lot. Um, but I don't know that I want to go back and watch all those old seasons of New York. I don't really know that I care. Now they have a new, you know, whole new thing. The only thing is <clears throat> that they're going to have the old cast on, like, girls' trips and stuff like that. So just for reference. But, like, I know them enough. Like, because I've watched enough of that. Tony and I used to watch New York a lot together. With Bethany Frankel and stuff like that. Who's causing all kinds of trouble, isn't she? So anyway. Yeah, I have, like, six or seven shows that I have to catch up on. Last, so, oop. Let's tip the table over. So last night I watched Big Brother, which was the live eviction and veto. I can't even get into what I think about that. I'm so over that show right now. Um, in all honesty, like, I'm going to watch it just to find out, like, of course, who wins and stuff like that. But this was not my dream final three. <clears throat> and I don't even think that they're feeling, they're playing, like, a good game at all. <clears throat> like, Matt and, okay, so Jag said he, he got rid of, uh, Felicia because he couldn't take out Matt, which would have been a fantastic game move, and I think then he would have been deserving of the money. Like, I think people come on these reality shows and they forget that they're, like, actually competing for money, and then it's, like, all about the friendships, which I think is great. I think that the friendships and the loyalty and all that stuff is great, but before you ever came on the show, you didn't know these people, you came on the show to win the money, okay? You can still be good friends and realize that it's a show, that you're, you're competing for money, and a huge amount of money. $750,000 is, I mean, that's life-changing money. Let's just be for real, right? Not to mention that they're going to have careers for the rest of their life based on this, you know, doing TV shows and other reality shows and stuff like that. I mean, Sri Fields has made a life out of her career on Survivor, Traders, and now Big Brother. And she'll probably be on an all-star season of Big Brother at some point. And I think her and her son Jared will probably do Amazing Race together. That's just kind of like my gut tells me that. So I am not, like, a firm believer that like the friendship is like, I mean, at some point you have to real remember why you're there. And this is the thing, okay? Just so we don't forget this. Jag said that, um, Jag said that he didn't evict Matt because of loyalty. So if Matt, if, if Jag gets down to the final, if he makes it, well, Matt won like the first part of the, the HOH competition anyway. So, but if Jag has some deciding factor on who goes to the final two and he doesn't take, and he, he takes Bowie Jane, then that loyalty excuse is bullshit, quite frankly. And what I wanted to happen was not what happened at all. So, um, okay. So there's that. Those are the shows I watch. Oh, and then I watch the garden commune or, and, oh, you know what? And after I just say this, I just want to say, I actually got on the vlog tonight and I said, I'm not going to talk about big brother at all. Um, so, just so you know, like, going forward, I, I just totally, like, I'm not gonna stop the vlog now, whatever, because all this information is already out there on Twitter and all this kind of stuff, and I read all the threads, so I feel like 
way before, like days before I even watch the show, I already know stuff. And I feel like if you're a super fan of the show, you kind of do too. Like I go to that Morty's TV every day to see like what the updates are and stuff like that. And I read all the threads. And most of the people that I know that like, Tanya's always like, oh yeah, like this has happened and that happened. I feel like everybody knows that. Well, a couple people got upset and they were like, Peter, you're spoiling Big Brother for me before I've even watched it. So I just want to say this, okay, going forward. I don't want people to stop watching my vlog because of spoilers. So just going forward, I am going to do my best. <laughs> no. I said I was going to do it tonight when I came on the vlog, and then I totally did the opposite of it. So I apologize greatly for this, but going forward. Um, and please just take this as a human mistake, okay? And that I understand you. I don't like shows spoiled for me either, even though I just literally did it. Um, going forward, I uh, will not be like spoiling stuff that I find out. If you watch my reality TV channel, I will be spoiling stuff over there because that's a reality TV channel and I'm talking about spoilers. I'm talking about things like that. So that will be over there. But on this channel, I won't do that. I will, from now on, I will tell you what TV shows I'm watching, but I will save the conversation about the TV shows for over there. Okay. So I, I greatly apologize for that. But anyway, um, but this is nothing that you can't find. <laughs> You're going to find it out tomorrow night anyway. So anyway, okay. But again, like whatever, I apologize. I'm already like feeling like I'm gonna get this huge backlash for this and people are gonna be like, Peter, spoiling TV shows, unsubscribe. And I'm like, okay, don't get on Twitter then. Don't get on Twitter. I literally sometimes will not get on social media until I've watched a show because I don't want it ruined for me. But like, I feel like Big Brother is like, it's everywhere, you know? Like with the, and that's not an excuse. I shouldn't have said that stuff in the video. So like I said, I apologize. But like with the housewives, it's like people will throw stuff up, but I don't have the context for it. So it doesn't really spoil the show for me. But like literally, you know, it'll be like, I get on Twitter and the first thing I see is this big banner and it says like Hysom's picture and it says Hysom's a new HOH. I'm like, okay, well that doesn't come out for four days, but now I know, right? I think in the, but the thing is if you don't, this is the thing, the one thing that people don't talk about, like, if you don't watch the streaming and you don't like read the threads on social media, like you're getting a very edited view of what happens on Big Brother. Like Jag and Matt and Bowie Jane have not been nice to Felicia and Sir uh, and Sari, like at all. They haven't been very well, Matt, but not really. Like they've all been kind of like mean, you know, and how they were talking about them behind the scenes and stuff like that. And so. Like they don't show that on Big Brother at all, right? And you don't really see a lot of the gameplay that goes on unless you like read the threads and things like that. Because what I was going to say is I think next time I watch Big Brother, apparently there's going to be like, well, I don't think this is spoiling it, but apparently there's going to be like a winner Big Brother. Um, but I don't know much about that. I, I saw the cast of who it is, supposedly. Allegedly, they're guessing who the cast is, but... There hasn't even been an announcement that it is happening. So um, there's like a big surprise that they're going to reveal on Big Brother about. And, but it's, not, it's I think it's about that. People are speculating. But anyway, but I don't know anything about that. So I can't spoil it because I don't know anything about it. But anyway, um, I was going to say like in the future if I watch Big Brother, I don't think I'll read the threads. But the thing is, is like even though it made the show less boring, I felt like I was really like involved in the show because like I knew everything that was going on behind the scenes and stuff like that. So I watched that last night and then it was getting late and I watched, I made a cup of tea and took my trazodone and I watched The Garden. And um, The Garden is that show, it's like about the the group, the commune group. They started in Tennessee and now they're, they're starting a farm in Minnesota and this one is about the farm in Minnesota. And there's all these people that come there as guests, but then they have to, it's so interesting. It's like they, they invite all these people to come there and they have to go through this 10 day process, but then it's like, they're not sure if they like want them to stay or there's like not room for them. I'm like, how are you trying to build? It's so weird. The whole show is so weird to me, but this Tyler guy on the show, the one, the one with the long hair is like so good looking and, um, I'm really like a smart guy and stuff like that. I'm not like one of those people, like they call them preppers or something, like getting prepared for like, you know, Armageddon or the end of the world or whatever like that. It's people that live or like, you know, on the gr off the grid. I'm not like with all that kind of stuff. I mean, during Y2K, I bought flashlights and candles and like got extra food and stuff like that. But I am not somebody that is about all that. Like my husband, I, I can't even have conversations about him because I'm like, well, what if, what would you do if there was like a zombie apop apocalypse? He's so boring. He's like, I would just go outside and let him eat me because I'm not going to even try to survive through a zombie apocalypse. I'm like, well, what about me and Boo? And he goes, I mean, you could walk out to the zombies too and go with me or you could just like, I don't know, try to survive. 
I'm like, you're not even fun about this conversation. Like, I've already thought this whole thing through. Do you guys do that with zombie apocalypses? I'm like, I would figure out how I was going to board my doors. We would live in the basement. There was no way to get in here other than this and this. You know, I would have all the stuff that I needed. I guess kind of in my mind, I am a little bit of a survivalist and a prepper. Well, only when it comes to zombie apocalypses, which probably will never happen anyway. Or what, what if they do, though? I mean, there's enough movies and books about that kind of stuff that it could happen. I mean, people think that that kind of stuff is like, I mean, there's other stuff that's happened that we never thought would happen, right? I mean, there's spotting aliens and stuff, all kinds of stuff. So, and I'm, I firmly 100% believe in aliens. I really, truly do feel like I'm just sitting here having a conversation with one of my girlfriends tonight. This is like the conversations we have. But no, like a zombie apocalypse could really happen. Alex won't even watch zombie movies. He's so scared. That's the only thing in the entire, he was not scared of anything. My husband is literally fearless. Except for when it comes to zombies. He won't even walk through the room when I'm watching a show with zombies on it, like The Walking Dead or Fear the Walking Dead. Because he's like, no, like, for real. Like, I grew up in South America, and in South America, like, zombies are real. I'm like, what do you mean zombies are real? He's like, no, they really are. Like, The Walking Dead is true, like, in South America. He's like, you grow up knowing that. I'm like, babe, zombies aren't real. Yes, they are. In South America, they're real. I'm like, okay. Like, his whole family is all freaked out by, like, zombies and stuff. We tried to watch that movie. Well, I ended up watching it. I think he watched part of it. But it was that La Luna or whatever her name is. It's like, he got so scared watching that movie. He was like, no, like, this is, like, we grew up, like, hearing this. Like, this is, like, this is how they would, like, get kids to behave and stuff when they were little kids. And you still, to this day, you don't know. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, that woman that'll come and get the kids and all that kind of stuff. Like, I couldn't even watch that whole movie. He was so scared of it. So, anyway, I think I might have watched that on a plane coming back from somewhere. So yeah, so then I watched uh, The Garden. It was like, last week they, it was like two episodes or it was like one episode and it was really long and they split it in half. I think it was supposed to be two episodes. This week they only uh, uh, uploaded one episode and it was like 43 minutes and it, was, it seemed so short. And I was like, could you just, could you guys just release the whole series all at once? Because I am so tired of waiting. To, I mean, I would have literally sat out here till eight in the morning and binge watched that Garden show. I love it. So that is why I'm excited about tonight because I get to watch some shows and Alex and I have some shows that we're watching and stuff like that, so we got some things to catch up on as well. I'm not really in the mood to watch the Kardashians tonight, though. So yeah, so that was my night last night, and then I went to bed. I did take my trazodone and drink my sleepy time tea, and it took me a little while to fall asleep last night. I was kind of tossing and turning, and um, and then Boo Radley was jumping down off the bed, and so finally I just was like, after like laying there for like 20 minutes, I, I was like, okay, Boo Radley, and I took him outside, let him run around for a bit. He was like crazy wild. But he went to bed early last night with Alex, so this is like five, six hours later, so he probably had to go potty. Went potty everywhere, just smelling the, the newspaper, then he pooped, finally. So I brought him inside, and I got some treats, and I took him upstairs, and um, put him back into bed. At this point, it was like 6.30, so I gave him his medicine first so that Alex wouldn't have to give it to him before he looked, because Alex was getting up. And I put him back into bed, <clears throat> and... Um, I love the sound of that candle. But I was having like a really, really hard time falling asleep last night. And so then, um, at some point I just like, I, I did fall asleep. Like when Alex left, I remember I was like falling asleep and then he kissed me um, goodbye. And I was like, have a good day, babe. He's like, okay, I'll see you tonight. And then he went up, he goes and kisses Boo. And then he comes and kisses, he goes and kisses Boo, puts on cologne and then he comes and kisses me and then he leaves. And so um, then I was talking to Boo cause Boo was like sleeping on his pillow. And he's been, like, spending so much time on that stupid blanket. Somebody asked me, like, if I could link that blanket. I don't know. I can look and see if the brand of the blanket is on Amazon. If it is, then I will link it below in this video. Okay? I will look and see. If there's a tag on the blanket, I will look it up on Amazon and see. And I will link it underneath here. I'm not going to be doing no affiliate link. It'll just be a link link. Okay? And you guys can go buy it. But it was $7.50 at Costco. I... I mean, these are blankets because Caroline wanted to go to the Dollar Tree. She's like, I can get this at, a do at the Dollar Tree probably. And I was like, well, it's kind of a big blanket, you know? It's like they can like really sink into it and get cozy. Somebody getting an Uber in this neighborhood. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> Who's getting an Uber tonight? They had a light in the front. It was a nice car too. Um, it's like a Cadillac or one of those like big Dodges that looks like Bentleys or whatever, you know? Do you guys think those Dodge cars look like Bentleys? I do. So anyway, um... I finally fell asleep, and then I woke up today, and I felt real rested, but I, I woke up late. So, last night, it was so funny. I think I talked about this in another video today, maybe my one of my, my about grieving pets on my Peter Does Stuff channel, but um, 
we were watching TV last night. I usually sit in the chair and Alex sits and lays on the couch. But last night, because he was sitting in the chair eating before we started watching TV, I lay, I was on the couch laying down. I like ate some of my leftover pizza, which was not great. I have to go to Costco tomorrow so I can get some more of these dips. Because these dips that I got, I'm like literally going through them. Those dips are so fantastic. My favorite is the jalapeno cranberry. I'm almost out of it. Um, and then I get those uh, sweet potato crackers. They are sweet potato corn crackers. They are literally unbelievable. And I'm so obsessed with them. And not, like that cranberry jalapeno dip is not like fattening. It's not bad for you. It's kind of somewhat healthy except it's like made with cream cheese, obviously. And then um, there's like a big chunk of cream cheese like right in the middle of mine. I like dipping around it. And then the the crackers are like not that bad for you either. They're like pretty healthy. And I just like eat them as a snack while we're watching TV and stuff like that. Last night, I made a cup of coffee. And the cake that I showed on my Instagram that our friend's um, husband, sister made the cake. She also made these cookies. And they're like shortbread cookies, chocolate bread, uh, chocolate um, chip. And she had to make them with a lot of different ingredients because of allergies and stuff like that. And I thought, they're going to not be great. I had one of them last night, and I was like, this is probably hands down one of the best cookies. I mean, this she needs to open a bakery. Like, seriously. I was like, and like half the cookie, it was like, it was like so it was like a square chocolate chip cookie. Like, perfectly square. And on one half of it, she had it covered with chocolate. Like, it was dipped in chocolate. But just on half of it. It was so delicious, you guys. And I almost ate the second one, but I still have the second one inside. Because I'm like, I'm going to save it for tonight. So anyway, ate that last night. Had a Snicker bar last night as well. Oh, I know what else I did last night. So I ordered, I bought like, a, did I buy two books on Audible last night? Because I had a bunch of credits. Well, not a bunch, but I had like four or five. I ended up buying five more credits because I went through my three credits. I need to do an Audible haul. I was going to try to do that, but then it got late today. So maybe I'll... Well, tomorrow's Cousin Fun Day, so we're doing it tomorrow instead of Wednesday this week. Um, so I don't know that I'll film a bunch of videos tomorrow. I also don't know if Tanya and I are going to a meeting tomorrow night. I haven't talked to Tanya in like two days. I need to call her as soon as I get done with this vlog. Um, so, so yeah, so I don't know what time I'll get home from that. If I end up going to a meeting, I might not even film a vlog tomorrow. I might just take the whole day off. I have no clue. Um, which is kind of partly why I wanted to film videos today, because I was like, I don't know what time I'll get home from Caroline, I don't know if I'm going to a meeting tomorrow, so I don't even know if I'll have time to vlog. Because if I go to a meeting, I won't even get home till like 10 o'clock tomorrow night, and I'm not vlogging at 10 o'clock, that's like way too late, and I'm going to be too tired then too. So, I may not film anything tomorrow on any of my channels, but I'll put that out if I, do, if I choose to uh, take the day off. But anyway, um, so yeah, so I woke up today and I felt rested and stuff like that, and then this like crazy stuff happened in the neighborhood, which I have to tell you guys about now. Uh, I'm going to pause here in just a second because I'm at that, like, the 28, almost at the 28-minute mark anyway. And so i got to go in and, like, flip some videos around so that I can, like, get all my videos done so that then I can just render my vlog and put it up. But I know that you guys are probably noticing that vlog, uh, that vlogger, you know. <laughs> she is a vlogger, you know. That Fernalicious is no longer behind me. I know people were really concerned that I was keeping her out here too long. Um, I wanted to water her, like, really heavy one day. I don't have the hose hooked up anymore, so I have to take out this, like, Kool-Aid thing and fill it with water and bring it out here for my mums and all this kind of stuff. So I did that tonight, and I just, like, put two huge Kool-Aid, like, big containers of water, and I, I did two for the each of the mums and then two for Fernalicious and watered her down. When she dries out, I'm taking her upstairs tonight to the bathtub. So you can see there's Fernalicious right there. And actually, let me show you. This is so funny. So I was out here... And I need to weed all this. If you can see, I kind of weeded some of it. So I weeded like, I took, because I was resting. And so I like pulled all of these like things off of the, the hostas. I pulled them all off. There's those. And then you can see over here. This is what I did tonight. I can't, I, for the life of me, I can't come out here and pull up these sticky weeds during the day. But I did those. I got to get, get all these leaves out of here. And then I picked these. Can you see all the sticks? Okay, I picked all these sticks as well. So it's looking better. I mean, I only have like, what is this? Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I mean, I have like 20 maybe. Um, 
what do you call it? I have like 20. Should I do it? Should I do it? My thumbnail out here. I have like 20 um, sticky weeds that I need to pick. And then um, the yard will be clean for the winter and ready to go. I'm not going to lay any more mulch down because it, will, it won't matter. It'll just break up and stuff through the winter. So this Okay, I'm back. It stopped. What you don't know is that while um, I was gone in that two seconds, or one second, <clears throat> I went inside, and my Peter Rosen's video was uploaded, so I started uploading my, on my phone, um, my, what do you call it, my reality TV video, and then I like checked my other videos and stuff, so that when I get done vlogging, all my videos for today will be done, and then I'll just have to upload my vlog, which will be really nice. It's currently, like when I came out here, I looked at the clock, it was 6.56, and, um, and then the last thing I did was I moved for Alicious um, so that she could dry off in a different place so that I can take her inside as soon as I'm done with this. Um, she's going inside. She's so happy to be with her brother. She can't wait. I got to come up with names for her brothers. I feel like, um, they're, you know, they're palm trees with lots of flowers. So they have to be kind of fun names, you know. But anyway... Oh, I know what I wanted to tell you guys. So last night, um, when we were watching TV, I think I started telling the story and then I, I got sidetracked. Last night when we were watching TV, I was laying on the couch and Alex was in the chair. We, Alex had already given Boo Radley his medicine for the night. And so this was like probably 9.30 or something like that. Alex ended up going to bed about 11.30. Well he would like go like jump up on the chair and be with Alex and Alex would hold him and then he would like jump down and then he would do like a lap around the house. So he goes, this is his lap. Sometimes he goes down to his house and then comes right back up. He just like checks on his house, I guess, or something. But like, like where we're sitting in the living room, the living room and the dining room is kind of all together, but he'll go from like the living room, then past the dining room table and then down the hallway to the bathroom. Then sometimes he goes downstairs, but sometimes he comes, but he'll come right back up and then he goes back and then he walks into the kitchen. We can hear him like his little, you know, paws on the ground. And then he walks into the kitchen and he walks, does a circle around the kitchen, like where we give him treats. And then he walks back into the living room. He stops and he looks up at both of us. Like he'll look at me when he walks by me and then he looks at Alex and he'll stop and then he'll do another lap, right? Well, but then sometimes he jumps back up, like, you know, on the chair or the couch, depending on where he wants to be and who he wants to snuggle with. But we always kind of find that, like, at that time of night, after he's had his medicine and whatever, like, sometimes he'll go and he'll stand on, like, the staircase. Um, like, he'll go, like, halfway up the staircase and he'll just stand there. And then, like, sometimes he'll, like, stand on the staircase and he'll cry and we'll hear him cry and we'll be like, what's going on? And then we'll go look and he'll, he'll do, like, one of these and he'll be like, mm -mm. like, he wants to go upstairs to the bedroom. Like, he's ready for to go to bed. He's done with the watching TV business, right? It's kind of funny. It's kind of like watching a child, like, fight being tired, if you know what I mean. So he will um, do all this kind of stuff. Well, I noticed he had, would do laps, and I noticed that he would, like, jump up and down off the couch. But I, I hadn't paid, like, real close attention to it, you know? I mean, because we would be watching a show, so, like, I didn't know how many times he had, you know, walked around or whatever. But I, I knew last night like, it was a lot. It always seems like it's a lot, but um, at some point, like... He'll like, because Alex usually is on the couch, and he'll like jump up, jump down, jump up, jump down. Like he'll jump up and be with Alex for like three or four minutes, and he'll jump down, do a lap, come back, jump up there, be with Alex for three or four minutes, jump down, whatever, right? And then his bed is in the cor corner, his little like pup bed, you know? I still, I still swear by those beds, because all of our dogs loved them, and Boo Radley loved them the most. It's this huge bed, and he lays right in the middle of it. So last night, he kept on doing these laps, and like literally some of them were fast, like he was speed walking, and then others were like real slow, like he was kind of getting bored. And I said to Alex, I go, what is the deal tonight? And maybe it's because I was in like the couch instead of the chair, so like every time he went around, I could see him do like the whole lap, through, you know, from, the, I could see him come in through the kitchen, and then I could see him like walk by me, go down from the TV, and then out. When I'm sitting in the chair, I'm just kind of focused on the, so I just see him kind of like walk in front of me. Maybe that's why I noticed it a lot more last night. But I was like, what is going on with him? Like, he is like nonstop walking. And Alex just laughed and he was like, babe, he was like, he does his laps every single night. And I go, what are you talking about? And he goes, he has his medicine, he gets restless, because I think he's fighting sleep. And then he does like 20 to 40 laps. And then he like goes to his bed and he lays down, he's out for the night. And I was like, 
really? And I was like, I mean, I noticed he had done laps, don't get me wrong, but like, I didn't know that it was that many. He's like, oh yeah, every night it's like 20 to 40 laps. Like when, sometimes when you're outside or if I'm just in here, like he'll do this 20 to 40 laps every single night. And then he, when he gets tired enough, he'll go over and lay down in his bed, just watch. Well, he did. He did like six to 10 more laps. And then he like walked right to his bed, ruffled his bed a little bit and then got in it and he was out. Like, I mean, he was dead asleep. <laughs> I thought it was like the cutest thing. And I was like, this is so funny because, like, I noticed so much about uh, about Boo Radley, and I was like, just like, I, I mean, I knew he did laps, but I didn't know it was like the thing he does every single night, right? I thought it was so cute. Well, and we're not down in the living room every single night. Like right now, Alex is upstairs and he's watching that, the original Ugly Betty, um, <laughs> which I said something about last night. He got laughing because I I called it Betty Lafleur or something like that. He goes, it's not French, it's Spanish, <laughs> and I go. Well, I don't know what the name is, because I said, but somebody on the vlog said that they love that show, and they said the real name for it. He's on the last episode of the entire, he, I mean, he binge watches seasons of shows like this. He's on the, he started watching it, like, I don't know, this week, or middle of last week, or something like that, he's already done with, like, all the seasons. I mean, I don't know how many seasons there are, but, um, he's, like, already done with, like, the entire thing. I'm like, how did you get through this show so fast? So, anyway... So I don't know what we're gonna watch tonight. I just asked him, I said, I'm gonna order some food here in a little bit. I have no clue what I'm gonna get. I said, do you want anything? Uh, this sounds kind of crazy, but I'm kind of craving Chinese food tonight. I feel like I wanna get something different. I always get the same thing. It's like pizza or pasta, always. I feel like I wanna gonna, kinda get like Chinese food or something. I don't know, we'll see. So I said, um, do you want anything? He's like, no, I've got, I've got pizza in there. He's been eating leftovers for days. He's like, I've got pizza in there, so I'll just eat that. And I was like, okay. So, um, so what was I gonna say? Okay, so I woke up this morning, right? Came out here, did my prayers and meditations and stuff like that. I could tell there was a lot of stuff going on in the street. I couldn't figure out what was going on. I was like, what is going on? So my neighbor was across the street and she was talking to her friend. And then like they went in the house real quick and then she left. And I was like walking down to the mailbox like when she went inside because I was gonna ask her, I was like, what is going on? Like I could see a lot of people like on the street talking. There's a lot of cars going down that way. I couldn't really figure out what was going on, right? So I went out to get the mail and when I went to get the mail, I saw that my neighbor, Laura, next door, um, she's 30 and so she's like the youngest one in the neighborhood and stuff like that. She was working, so her entire like, her porch is like when you walk up, it's like inlet. It's like, in, so but she's got it beautiful. She's got, I mean, she has, she, you talk about master gardener. The entire inside of her house is all like huge house plans. It's unbelievable. But the, when you walk up to her door, it's like this, she's got this huge chair. It's like this wicker chair. You know, like those ones at the top that look like they're from Brazil or something. She's got this wicker chair and like a table she reads out there. With, like this little lamp because the whole thing is covered over. And then, um, you know what I just realized is like her front is exactly like their front, but her condo is not designed like that. Oh, I think it's backwards is what it is, maybe. That's why they have the same patio. But anyway, she has all these plants. Like when you come up to her front door, it's like the front door is over here, but like when you come up to it, it's like the whole thing is like all these plants. Like, I mean, it's unbelievable greenery with this chair in the middle of it. It's like so cute. I was like, I love this area. Where, like I told her this earlier in the summer. I was like, I could read out here all day long. I love it. So any, or listen to an audiobook. So anyway, I was going over there, and I was getting ready. I was like, she was out there working on those plants, and so I saw her, and so I started walking over there. I was like, hey, how are you? Well, my neighbors next door, they were driving, and they were, they pulled out of their driveway, and they like drove down to where we were, and they were like, did you guys see what happened And at the tennis court? And we're like, no. Like, this is, this is the kind of HOA stuff that happens on a regular basis, right? And they're like, somebody drove through. So the tennis courts, there's two tennis courts out down there. They're really nice tennis courts. Somebody, um, so there's huge, like, 100 foot, those, like, the black, you know, wire uh, fencing around it. You know, it's, like, really tall. You know, you, a lot of tennis courts have those, right? So it has it all the way. There's, like, a gate in the front that's locked that you have to, like, have the key to get into it. It's the only way to get in the tennis court. Somebody had come down, it's the road behind us. This road isn't even part of our condo association. And actually the house right behind us is a private house and it has a gate that sometimes they leave open and sometimes they don't. But the only, the only house at the end of that private drive is their house. The house that you see behind sometimes, my house. <coughs> That's the only house in that street. They own all that land back there, right? Somebody had driven th through their gate 
took out two pine trees, went through all these trees in the woods, and went, I don't know how fast they were going, and went through the gate, drove around the tennis court once in like this SUV, and parked. <coughs> I don't even know how they're going to get the car out of there. Because now the gate is like, they didn't rip the gate open, they like went through it, and then the gate like bounced back. So you would have to like, have like, I don't know, people on ladders lifting up the gate. Because it tore it out of its like grounding in the ground. <coughs> so everybody was going up there to look because nobody knows whose car it is. The police were out there and everything. Everybody's trying to figure out what happened, how they got into the tennis court. And then it was like just like calmly parked, like right next to the tennis net. It's like they, they it happened and then it like drove around once and then come back in. But it had to have been all the way out there. In all honesty, it was a little triggering for me so but it was crazy and all these people were talking about it and all these people were worried and they're like <coughs> my throat is itching everybody was like i hope everybody's okay and um they were like really really worried about it and stuff like that hey so but i don't even know what happened with it um i think that i think the car's still down there like the police came and left and they were like we we don't know and like we're gonna have to have somebody come and like take the car out we've got to figure out how to do it and they had to coordinate with those people whose house it is and stuff like that because the tennis courts are on our property but like the tennis courts back up to their property or are on part of their like it's like our prop their property our property and so um so yeah it's like it's crazy but i hope everybody's okay and there's nobody there the car was just like sitting there empty apparently like they left a note or something so i guess everybody is okay but anyway that was like the big thing that happened in the neighborhood today everybody was like down there at this tennis court and we're all just like standing on the outside of this tennis court I mean, this is the neighborhood right i mean it's, it's i don't know it's just kind of ridiculous we're all standing outside this tennis court looking at this suv just like parked perfectly parked inside it's like literally like an alien just dropped this car like on the tennis court there's like because when you're looking at it it's like how the hell did this car get in here there's like because the gate has kind of gone back to like it looks like it's normal again so it's i mean like they drove through it at such a force that then the gate like went back to kind of how it was you know and the car's like hardly damaged like at all there's like scratches on like the front left hand side of it but other than that like the car's not damaged at all and um so everybody was trying to figure out what had happened. I don't know whose car it is, but like I said, I hope they're okay. If they left a note, the police said they left a note, so they, they must be okay. Um, but anyway, so I guess the police are dealing with it now. But that was the big talk of the neighborhood today. The guy that was up there, that's in, he's like the in charge of like the money for the HOA board and always putting all this stuff out about what we're spending money on and all this kind of stuff. So she and I want to be on the pool committee next year to keep the pool open. So I said to him, I go, like I said, that's like a lot of damage to the tennis court's fence. I said, what does something like that cost to repair? And he goes, that will cost us probably about $4,000. He goes, unless we know who did it and then they'll have to you know, pay for it and fix it. I go, oh, that's a lot of money. I go, well, I go, I hope that doesn't take away from our fund of leaving the pool open um, a, a couple extra weeks next year. <laughs> we're just laughing. He looked at me. He looked at me. He's a real nice guy. He looked at me and he was like, I never really talked to him before the end of the summer. And then we started talking. He's a really nice guy. And he looked at me and he goes, he goes, we'll work on keeping the pool open a little bit longer, Peter, just for you and Laura. I was like, it's not just me and Laura. It's like all of our neighbors. We love the pool, right? That's why Laura and I want to be in charge of the pool. That way we can take care of it and then it'll be up, on, up to us to keep it open and all that kind of stuff. I even started thinking I'm going to start putting like $5 aside like every week so that I have like a fund of money that I can just say when they say, well, it's going to cost such and such money to keep it open. I'll be like, well, I already have a pool fund. So here you go. Here's my pool fund to keep it open for the next, you know, $10 a week for what is that? It's like 26 weeks or something like that. Was that $260? That's like a third of it. That's pretty good. You know what I mean? To keep the pool open. My neighbor in the corner last yesterday when she came over here to talk to me, we were having coffee. She's like, um, I, I was, I showed her my countdown, uh, cause I have a countdown to when the pool opens and it's like 212 days or something now. And I go, 
we talk a lot about sobriety because she always is asking me questions about my sobriety and stuff like that. And so I showed it to her and I go, guess what this countdown is for? And she's like, I have no idea. I go, it's something that's important to both you and I. And she goes, is it your sobriety birthday? She goes, no, your sobriety birthday is in December. She's like 200 and I can't remember how many days it was, but whatever. And I go, it's important to both of us. And she just looked at me and I go, it's when the pool opens. And she goes, oh my God, do you have a countdown to when the pool opens? <laughs> She goes, why does that seem like it's so far off? I go, I know, I know. But listen, I said, we're almost like halfway through November. And then there's Christmas and New Year's. And then listen, it's just like we're counting down the days till the pool open. I said, I cannot wait until the pool opens. I'm so ready. I said, I'm going up there every single day this next summer. Every single day, unless I'm not here. Alex keeps on changing what he wants to do for his birthday. Y'all want to know? Okay. So you know it was Bali that he wanted to go to. But now he's decided that he thinks because he wants a bunch of people to go for the birthday. I'm not really sure that I think that any of our friends are going to want to do either one of these trips because I think Bali is so far away. I mean, I think people want to go to Bali, but I mean, it's like literally 24 hours from Indianapolis and a flight there and back. And so you lose a day there and back. I think he kind of realized that. So he's like, well, that's a trip that you and I can take. Because he wants to do Thailand, too. So I was like, well, maybe at some point we can just take... I mean, a big consideration, too, is Boo Radley, you know? And I'm like, well, maybe, like, down the road, like, meaning when Boo's not here anymore, um, we can take... I mean, I, I just... You know, that's a lot for, you know... I think Alex wanted to end up going for, like, two and a half weeks, or something like that, or three weeks, for, you know, a dog that at that point will be, like, 14 and a half. So, so he was like put that together and all this kind of stuff. He's like, well, what if we go to Belgium for like a week? And I go, we can, I mean, if we're going to go to Mexico, we could go to Belgium for a week. It's the same, you know? And I go, what's in Belgium? I didn't even think about this, even though this has been like literally in the top five of my husband's bucket list for like the last, you know, 15 years since we've been together. He was like, I want to go to Tomorrowland in Belgium. I was like, oh God. <laughs> The world's biggest music festival in the entire world. <laughs> Which I'll be really excited to go. He's like, you don't have to go if you don't want to. He always says that. I'm like, no, I want to go. I want to go to Tomorrowland. I don't know that I can do three days at Tomorrowland. Or I think it's like even longer than that. But I was like, no, I'd totally be down to do that. I want to go to Belgium too. And actually, it's so funny because when we were over at Caroline's for Halloween, she was like, are we still doing Bali? Like Caroline's in it for, she said she wasn't going to go. And then she turned around and she said, I'll go to Bali. I'll take off the, all the time that I want, you know, because now she switched jobs and stuff like that, so she's like, she could take off whenever she wants to take off, which is like the highlight of her, you know, being an agent again by herself. She's like, I can take off two or three weeks if I want to, so now I can go to Bali. So she's down for whatever trip it is. Caroline is down for a trip, period. She goes, I'll just bring a girlfriend with me, it'll be fine. And Alex is like, well, we're not doing Bali anymore. And she's like, well, what are we doing? And she and he said, Belgium. And she goes, oh, I've always wanted to go to Belgium. He's like, yeah, we're gonna go see, we're gonna go to the music festival of Tomorrowland. And um, she was like, uh, she was like, no, what's that? And so he was like showing her videos and pictures of what Tomorrowland is. And she's like, oh my god, that would be so much fun. I've always wanted to go to a big music festival. So Caroline's first music festival ever is gonna be the world's biggest music festival, Tomorrowland. <laughs> But if that's what he decides to do for his birthday, I think that will be fun. And it's a lot better than a 24-hour flight. And Alex did say, I want to save that for just you and I to do. And we can go to Thailand, and then we can go to Bali, and then we could, we could do like a week in Th Thailand, a week in Bali, and a week in Fiji. You want to talk about an expensive-ass trip. I don't know when we're taking that trip, but <laughs> I don't know when we're doing that trip. But that's a, that's a trip of a century to save for, right? Um, he's like, well, all we have to do is save for it. And I'm like, okay, we're saving for the house repairs. We're saving for to buy a condo somewhere else. So, like, you know, San Diego, we're thinking about San Diego instead of Florida now, but maybe Florida, we don't know. Uh, maybe, like, Arizona, um, you know, we don't know. Like, somewhere maybe, like, on the East Coast, we're still thinking about that. That's probably, like, five or six. People ask that a lot. They're like, are you still getting a place in Florida? We don't know where we want a place, and there's a lot of different places that we might think about. Fufu and Jesse are staying in San Diego to raise their kids. They're, they're trying to buy a house right now. So they're not coming back to Indiana. Originally, they thought they might come back to Indiana and have their kids, but they decided to stay out there. We thought it might be nice if instead of Florida, we got a place in San Diego. Because then any of the family could go out there, like his mom or whatever, and visit. And then we could go out there and stay and whatever. So Alex would still prefer to be in like Miami. So we don't know what we're going to do. But our plan at this point is to like start the house remodel. Like we still have to save money for it. I mean, this stuff, I don't know how people just like come up with money like that to do remodels, but it's expensive. And so, and, and we don't want to do it ourselves. We're not any good at that kind of stuff to save money. We just, it, it'll be a money pit. 
So we want to start that like probably a year from the summer and then take like two and a half years, two years to do like the whole thing, starting with the basement and then moving up and doing the whole thing. So probably like a two years, like we'll do a part and then we'll save some money, do another part, save some money. And then after that, when the condo is exactly how we want it to be, because we're never going to sell this condo because it will always be our place in Indianapolis. So then when that happens, we'll, we'll by then have figured out where we want to go, figure out price points. San Diego is so expensive though to buy anything out there. It's like, oh my God. This is when Jesse were telling us that like to have a house here in Indiana that would cost you like two or three hundred thousand dollars, which you can get a lot for that in Indiana. Like you can get a four bedroom house with a pool in the ground. I mean, you can get a lot for that in Indiana. I know there are people that are in Indiana like that's not true. Yes, that is true. There are places like Avon and other places like, you know, even the north side of Indianapolis, there's places that you can get that aren't super, super expensive, you know? Of course there's places that are eight hundred to a million, but not like in San Diego. They're telling us that like a two bedroom, two bath house that would cost here like 160 to 230 or something like that, 250, 300, would literally cost 800 to a million there. And it would be like 30 years old and you'd have to put a lot of work into it. So, I mean, I would love to get a condo out there but I for the family and stuff, but I don't know that I think that that's affordable, you know? And, I mean, like, anybody that, in the family that goes out there to visit, like, they can stay, you know, with Fufu and Jesse, obviously, so, because they'll have a place then. So I don't know what we're going to do, but... When we get the condo done, that will be probably like, you know, two and a half, three years, three and a half years. That's when we're going to start like really working on saving the money to like get a down payment on a place and figure out where we want to be and then really seriously start taking a look at it. And five years from this upcoming summer is when we want to have a place somewhere else. That's kind of our long-term goal that we've been talking about. Um, there's my neighbor, Laura. She's coming home. So that's kind of our long-term plan. I know people like ask a lot about that, but like that's just something that we're planning on. So yeah, I don't even know how I got in that whole conversation. I was probably talking about something else and I totally forgot what I was saying. I love this neighborhood. When we were out there at the tennis court, I kind of was like put off like looking at the car, not put off, but like I was kind of triggered looking at the car, like it kind of like freaked me out. And my neighbor across the street, not the wife, the husband, he's like so nice to me, he always asks me if I need rides places or if I need him to pick me up anything or whatever, he's so nice, like every day he checks on me. He's retired, he's like 75. So we were all standing up there, right? And he like looked over at me and I and I said to him, I go, I haven't seen you in a couple of days. He's like, yeah, it's been kind of cold. I haven't been coming out as much, but I was like, every time I get, oh, no, no, I said to him, the only, time, the only time I've seen you is when you got the mail. And he goes, because on my video the other day, he was like getting my mail and whatever, or getting his mail. And then he would like look to see if I had any mail. And I said, the only time I see you is when you're getting the mail. And he's like, yeah, I haven't been coming out a whole lot because it's cold. And um, I said, well, we need to like, you know, have a talk and stuff like that and get together because I miss like talking with him in the summer. We would like talk for like a half an hour a day. He'd come over here some days and sit in this chair and talk and all this kind of stuff, right? And he's like, yeah, we need to get together and talk. And he just kind of looked at me and he goes, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm okay. It was funny because like, that he so cute into this and he's like, no, I'm okay. like asking, are you okay? Like, is this like upsetting you because of the accident? And I was like, and, and I, like, to be honest with you, like, I kind of, like, went up there and everybody was talking about it. I didn't really think about it. And then I kind of started feeling kind of weird about it, you know, just, like, looking at this car sitting there. Um, and, like, I don't remember anything, you know, leading up to the accident before the accident until five days later. I don't remember anything. And so, like, just the pictures that I saw and stuff like that. And I think that was what it was, was, like, the pictures of, like, my car that I saw. And then just seeing this car sitting there, knowing that it had been involved in this accident, like, it kind of freaked me out. Um, but it was like so nice that he was like aware of that. Yeah, and then everybody was like really concerned that the people were okay and like they weren't, like nobody was pissed about the, the tennis court or anything like that. Everybody was just like, I hope they're okay. Like, you know, I hope they find out who it is and that they're okay and stuff like that. It was just really nice. I live in such a nice neighborhood. Um, yeah, it's really nice. Alex is starting to talk to the neighbors too. Is that not so funny? I never thought he would, but he's, like, getting into talking to the neighbors and stuff like that. I mean, some neighbors more than others. Like, he loves them in the corner, and he loves our neighbors, and he, lo and he loves Laura. Um, he doesn't really know them across the street so much because, like, they go to bed early, and so, like, when he's out here walking boo and stuff like that, he sees them on the weekend and talks to them on the weekends, but 
Um, like we went to dinner at our neighbor's house and stuff like that. And so I'm like, he knows them really, really well. Um, and when he sits on the back patio, they're on the back patio a lot in the summer, like eating. So he'll like talk to them and stuff like that. Cause he can, can see their patio from our patio or you can kind of, if they're out there, you know, they're out there and stuff like that. And he talks a lot to Laura and so, um, so it's funny, like, yeah, he's talking, but he's talking to more neighbors, like neighbors that he doesn't know. Like when they walk down and be like, Hey, how are you? And he'd be like, I'm Alex. And I'm like, Oh my God, this is so funny. Is this what growing up is all about? Cause this is what happened to me. And now my husband is doing it. <gasps> is my husband going to sit in the pool with all the ladies in the neighborhood next time I want to drink his coffee? <laughs> you are not taking over my, listen, there is only one HOA president in this neighborhood and it is Peter Mon. Okay. It is not Alex Pred. <laughs> so you better just know your president. He'd be like, if I said that to him, he'd be like, you think I want anything to do with that HOA? I could care less. But I think that's so cute that he's like talking to everybody and stuff. Isn't that so cute? So yeah. I love my neighborhood so much. Look at how beautiful it is out here tonight. You guys see? It's like so still and beautiful. It's really nice out. I mean, it still feels like really warm. I mean, I'm not in t shirt and shorts and I'm completely fine. Isn't that crazy? Well, I think I'm gonna go inside and, and upload, make sure that my other videos are uploaded and get them published. It's probably like about 7.30 now almost, probably. And then I'm gonna start rendering this vlog and get it up. Then I'm gonna take Fernalicious to the bathtub upstairs. I gotta get her brother situated first. I don't know why I feel like they're brothers, but I feel like they're brothers. What should be good names for my, in the comment section below, and then I'll know you watch my whole vlog. Put what you think, they're, so they're tall palm trees, and then they have that, that uh, stuff that kind of hangs over the side of it on the side um, it's called something Jenny I can't remember but it's like they have it off the side of it and then there's like flowers in the middle which are still blooming which is crazy right there's some parts of them that need to be like weeded out so I might do that tonight and then I'm gonna put Fernalicious in between them so and there's like a big sunlight that comes right down on them so they get sun during the day and uh, yeah so what do you think so the palm trees are probably like five feet tall if not more what do you think the names for the two palm trees should be? The brothers. So let's remember that, okay? I want good names. Don't let me down. <laughs> Don't let me down. Good names for the palm tree brothers. <laughs> My brother-in-law, Fufu, is like obsessed with palm trees. Like wherever, like when we were out there in San Diego, like the time before, he'd be like, oh, that's a, this kind of palm tree and that's kind of palm tree. And we like got laughing so hard. And he was like, really, he was like, got really upset. He's like, I just like palm trees. Like I'm really interested in palm trees. <laughs> So now I like send them stuff about when like when we were in Miami on Lincoln Road the last time like they have these things like in front of each palm tree and it's like you scan it and then it gives you all this information. And so I sent it to him and he thought I was like making fun of him. I was like, Fufu, I'm not making fun of you. Like I get you have an interest in palm trees. I think it's cool. So when we were out there for the wedding, I was like talking to him and he was like, I know that you weren't making fun of me. I go, I totally love that you like are so interested in something like completely out there. He's like, I just love palm trees. He was like, I love like the, you know, just how long they live and things like that. He's like, I just love palm trees. I was like, I think that's cool. How many people do you meet that like know a lot about palm trees? Not that many people. I think that's cool, you know? So anyway, so I got two palm tree brothers. I should probably ask him what we should name them, but I'm gonna ask you instead, okay? I need two names of palm tree brothers. And the award for the best names that I will be, I will name them off of what you guys say in the comment sections. I will pick, I will pick something off of this video, okay? So whoever, unless they're all horrible names and I don't like any of them, then I won't. But the, the award, I was going to say the reward, the reward or award, the award for having the best names that I end up naming the Palm Tree Brothers is the fact that you get to pick the names of my Palm Tree Brothers. That's a good award, isn't it? And then like when I'm talking about like Johnny and Steve up in the bathtub, you'll be like, oh my God, I came up with the names Johnny and Steve and Peter used them in a video. See, that's a pretty cool award, isn't it? Some things, like it's not all about money, right? It's not all about candy bars. It's not all about gift cards and stuff like that. That's nice too. Sometimes it's just about having the best answer. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh. Anyway, I'm gonna get off here now. I'm gonna make it do a real short outro. Oh my gosh, there's this leaf over here that is stuck underneath my table. Let's see this beautiful leaf. Anyway, I look like that leaf. These two, like grains, what was it? Like sand in an hourglass. These are the days of our lives. And this day and this vlog is coming to an end. I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. Love you.